Hi guys, it's Elise from Theme Park Insanity and today we are back at Warwick Castle to look at the Festival of Archery half-term event. Now, I did this event last year. Um, obviously, I didn't vlog or do any content on it then. But we are here today to hopefully see what's changed around the castle since we visited last year and see everything that this event has to offer. So without further ado, um, let's get started. Okay, so on the way into the castle, just wanted to do a little update on the all new Warwick Castle Hotel. Um, this has really flown up since we last visited in the, well, last time we visited in dark, so we couldn't really see a lot. But what we can see now is that the windows have started to go in and they're all quite nicely themed. They've all got, you know, uh, designs on the windows and the entrance is starting to be built as well. Um, this accommodation is going to be 60 rooms and I'm fairly confident that there will be some themed rooms in there, such as um, maybe Zog, Knights, Princesses, Horrible Histories, um, maybe even a Dungeons themed room if they wanted to be really bold. Um, I think that'd be quite an interesting one. But yeah, what are your thoughts on uh, Warwick Castle getting a new hotel? And will you be staying here? So it looks like there's a little bit of work going on on the coach house courtyard. Um, this is also the main entrance to the castle. Uh, it looks like it's quite busy today, which is always a good thing. And it also looks like there's a few actors out as well, so... <laughs> this could be fun. Okay, so as you can see, we've arrived to the castle. Um, and as you saw from the entrance there, um, it's a good day. It's not doesn't look like it's going to be too busy, but at the moment it is busy as it's just opened. Um, so everyone's in the same part of the castle. Um, the roaming actor out there as well, he's absolutely various. Um, so I, we love how the actors are at Warwick Castle. They're always quite entertaining, quite fun. Um, they all seem to know what to say as well, which I think is really quite entertaining. Um, yeah, first impressions of the event. Uh, they've got some new photo sort of ops and things set up, which is... New for this year, I believe. Um, we've got some, but we'll hopefully go back to those later on just because it was quite busy as it's just as you walk in. Um, but also, just noticed if I turn around this way, they are preparing for the new uh, Zog Quest for the Golden Star for this year. And for what it looks like, um, it looks like they are upgrading this trail this year with some more 3D models instead of the 2D sort of cutouts that they've had in previous years. Um, I reckon we'll see a few more of these sort of construction areas set up in the other areas that the trail was used for last year, but we'll go and check those out. But yeah, let's go and check out the offerings for the Festival of Archery and see what else is going on today. So as you can see, we've got a list of different things that are happening today. Um, there's like quite a long list of different events happening throughout the day. And of course, at the very bottom, Zog is doing meet and greets. So maybe we'll even meet Zog, who knows? Let's go inside. <laughs> so the castle has a have a go archery option um this is around all year round but festival archery is the first time in the year that you can try it and it's also the more popular time for people to give it a go um it is an upcharge attraction at six pound per person not too sure if that includes annual pass discount but i don't think it does for some reason um, but yeah, it's a really, really good experience and as you can see, they're all on hand to teach and show you the best ways of firing and it's full of some good knowledge as well. Um, is this something you'd be interested in trying? Let us know. Unfortunately, Warwick has also been home to a lot of flooding recently. Um, as you can see, the riverbank is a little bit higher up than, well, a lot higher up than usual. Um, Unfortunately, that means that the Birds of Prey show will be a little bit different. 
just because as you can see by the boathouse the little raft that they have that goes back and forth at the beginning of the show is not in front of you there um, but the show that they're doing today is the Winter Birds of Prey show which is a slightly different offering um, usually when this show happens well when any of the Birds of Prey shows happen you sit over there um, if you look at the ground you can see why we're no longer sitting down there today we'll be behind a rope instead but yeah it'll be good to have a look at the Winter Birds of Prey show hopefully we'll try and catch a bit of footage of the birds later on it's always a great show to see the birds of prey flying around, um, but yeah, we'll be back later when that show's on and hopefully be able to show you that. So this is the Peacock Gardens. Uh, no prizes for guessing why it's called the Peacock Gardens. <laughs> Yeah, the peacocks roam freely across the entire castle grounds. Um, they mostly spend their time in the peacock gardens, but you can find them in other places. We've seen them before on the sort of side of the castle, in the castle, in the car park. But yeah, they spend most of their time just sort of walking around their own garden. Um, as you can see, they're quite chilled out, but obviously don't go approaching them or being silly because they will peck you or run away. But yeah. There's a couple of them out today, uh, which is always great. And as you can see, there's one over there who's uh, interacting, I think. So we started off with a little bit of a walk around the outside of the castle grounds. Um, certain areas like the pump house down the bottom are currently unavailable and that makes a lot of sense due to the flooding that's actually happening in the river. So for obvious reasons that area is unavailable at the moment. Um, but yeah, the outside of the gardens and stuff, we've had a walk around there. Obviously we've had a look at the birds of prey area and by, by the trebuchet and it's all looking as it was. Um, there's not been any significant changes to those areas, but it's still as lovely a walk as ever. Um, obviously in the summer the grass has grown back a bit and it's a little less damp. So that's obviously why we've got like, a lack of plants and the greenery at the moment. But it's a nice area and a nice walk all the same. Um, it's not very busy, it's quite peaceful. But yeah, we'll head back into the castle and see what's going on in there. Now Master Philip will make his way over to to decide who is the victor in each of the rounds. What we will do is we will get our archers to shoot initially down the line, one at a time. We will start with Master Joseph, and then we will work our way down the line. We will do this for the first two arrows. Then after that, I will ask you to loose at will. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if any of you are called William, that doesn't mean you need to be scared. We're not going to loose arrows at you. That's just wide of the mark there from Master Joseph. Oh, fantastic first shot there from Master Jim. Oh, that is... Good noise. <laughs> so we just went and saw the first round of the Festival of Archery. Um, yeah, that was a lot of fun as you saw from some of the footage there. It's a, it's a tournament that happens between four teams and each team has two archers and they fight it out to see who is best on hitting the target. Um, as you can see we had a final section there as well. Um, it was a lot of fun and as you can still hear the crowds are really supportive of their archers or not in some cases. So in some cases uh, there was this one little kid next to me who just kept booing everyone which I thought was quite funny. Um, but these archers are seriously talented but also the guys who are commentating and spectating as well. They've got some really funny, quick humour, um, some great jokes as well coming out. And yeah, we can't wait to see what else they get up to during the day, and hopefully we'll catch them all those shows. I'm not quite sure which one I'm rooting for on this. I think maybe the, the guy in red. You just wanted another view of how the uh, river is looking. It's a little bit 
bit, uh, flooded. Okay, so Kingmaker, um, it's a long-standing attraction that has been in the castle. Um, as you saw in the clips there, it's a bit of a walkthrough of the undercroft of the castle. And it kind of goes through the story of the Kingmaker and also kind of gives you an insight of how life in the castle and how life being a person around the castle would have been. Especially those close and involved in the Kingmaker story. Um, one thing I did notice about that was that they have actually removed quite a few models actually since we were last here. Um, most notably for me was there was a cat originally in the scene with the little boy shooting an arrow. The cat was quite cute, so I don't know where the cat's gone. But there was also um, areas where there were a lot of other missing models as well. So the one scene which is quite open plan, there was originally a little girl surrounded by a few other characters but they're missing. Um, and the final room where you kind of just before the shop, it feels like that is really missing some stuff as well recently. Um, annoyingly for me as well, they're still doing the thing where they're printing out the photos that they've taken of you before you have the chance to look at them. And as said in my previous video, you know, please stop doing this. I think it's uh, really, really wasteful. And almost pressure of Sally kind of thing as well. Um, the reason I find it a bit weird as well is because this time they've given you the scannable QR code. So it kind of doesn't make any sense that they've also decided to print that picture when you can scan the QR code and go online anyway. Um, but yeah. Warwick, please consider getting rid of the pre-printed photos. Let people see the pictures before they buy them, please. Um, it'll, be, it'll just be so much easier, so much nicer. And it might you might get more people buying them. I mean, I don't know how many people buy the photos in this current situation with the, them being pre-printed. But I think please consider just doing them as the QR codes or have them on the screen to show them instead. So the tower is actually open today. Um, I was quite surprised about this because obviously it's cold and quite wet but it is open and people can go up if they would like to I don't think the full walls are open I think it is just the one tower today by the looks of it but due to the fact that it is a lot of steps and it's quite a walk and it's cold and windy I'm not going up there today but you can see a few people are a bit braver than me in this weather and have gone up and over there by the dungeons, the um, jester today is on top form. Uh, <laughs> he's having a lot of fun outside, sort of waiting for his victims to come in and has been very actively antagonizing everyone who walks past, which is really good. And he's also having a great amount of fun in his, uh, his part of the show as well. Um, we can hear him from a lot of the castle, which is quite good. It's good to see him having a little bit of fun today. I think the maid's just in the situation with the water outside. <laughs> okay, so it looks like uh, the this section is still under its uh, maintenance, as we're now being told to go back on ourselves. <laughs> so, I guess we're going back that way. <laughs> around here, and um, lots of you, I reckon, you'll know what type of bird this is, won't you? Um, and, uh, Alaska, right across northern Europe, almost as far over as like parts of Russia. But they do migrate. Okay, so I just showed you a few segments there of the Birds of Prey uh, winter show. Um, yeah, that was about all I could see, unfortunately. Um, one thing that I do think with the winter show, because they don't use the grass verge with the benches, it's a very difficult show to see. So as you saw there on the last clip, there was quite a large gathering. Um, from my view and from what I could see, you can only really see the majority of the show if you're on that front line, um, which of course is usually the smaller children. But there was also a lot of adults in that front row as well today, so it was quite hard for me to actually see anything because uh, the curse of being someone who's quite short. Um, we also heard a couple of people as we were leaving the show just because we decided we couldn't actually see much there so there's no point us staying there. Um, 
a few people with children who were approaching were sort of with the same worry. So a couple of them were saying, oh, I don't know if you'll be able to see anything. And then I also heard a few other kids going, I can't see anything. Now, uh, obviously we understand that we can't have everyone on the grass due to the fact it's wet, it's cold, and it's also a different show that they're running there compared to the usual show where they're going across the river. Obviously due to the fact that the river is also um, flooded at the moment. But there is a potential way that they could uh, remedy this. Um, one of the ways would be to maybe use the grass verge that they used to use on the side of the castle instead of using the new arena that they've made for it. However, I believe this probably is not an option due to the fact that the birds are currently used to flying over there and changing the environment they may not fully understand and they get confused. But this section that we're sat next to at the moment opposite the um, opposite the little shop over here, if I just turn around a second. This section here where they used to run the original bird show would probably be a better choice for the winter show as you've got the top section and the bottom section where people can stand on actual concrete ground. Um, they've done the show in that this fashion for the last two years over the winter at least, but please consider, you know, potentially for the winter show, moving it to another section where more people have a chance to see, just because it's quite difficult to see, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, uh, that's a little bit of the bird show anyway. Um, just to point out, we have seen the main Falconer's Quest show in the summer, and we think it's an absolutely amazing show. The winter show, unfortunately, um, just because of the fact that we can't see a lot, is not as enjoyable. But it is a show which is a lot shorter. Instead of flying a lot of birds, they only fly four birds. But if you can see, it is a great show, but unfortunately, we couldn't see a lot. <laughs> This is the crossbow round. That's right, we are taking away our archers, more familiar weapon, their longbow, and replacing them with this. It is the crossbow. This is a round with a bit of a European flavour, ladies and gentlemen. I think that required a slightly less sarcastic ooh, so we're going to try that again. They said it's got a European flavour, ladies and gentlemen. Now this is the weapon of the French. On any of the Titans here, he will take the lead here. And another solid point there for Chris in the greens. Let's have a round of applause. This is very... Oh, he means business. Oh, and it skims the edge. The fletching's just skimming the edge there, but the target doesn't drop, and therefore he remains on two points. So now, Nikki could either go for the bigger targets to level it up, or she could go for any of the smaller targets to take the win, ladies and gentlemen. The pressure is on. Oh, they're straight into the scenery, but no cigar for Nikki, unfortunately. Round of applause there for our archer. Fantastic work. Commiserations to Nikki, who will make her way to, to join the, the loser enclosure over there. And Chris, please make your way to the winner's enclosure over here. And who will raise their voices for Liz in blue? A miss there for Chris. So, Liz must now hit one point to draw level or one of the smaller targets for the win. And a miss, which means a victor in the crossbow round. We have Chris of the Green Team. Commiserations to Liz in blue. Fantastic performance all around from all of our archers. Absolutely fantastic work. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's have one massive round of applause once again for all of our archers. Thank you very much, Liz. Let's see if we get lost. Um, we might do, actually. <laughs> so, we have got our time passport. If I just open this up, I've got one hand. This is kind of... Oh, there you go. Thanks, sir. So the idea of this maze is you go and find each section and get these stamps on the cards. And as you can see, it's all over the place. So let's go that way. So there's multiple little of these little stamp points around. And Sam's going to get his first stamp. You need a little bit of force on them sometimes. You see? You know what? I always got this. Actually, the biking area has its own little biking tents. 
Hello, Marky Village. We're just gonna go. We have our little small climbing point. Which took us up above the maze a little bit. So up here you can see little kind of hints as to where you should be going in these little sort of like place cards that are floating around. And we have found ourselves on top of a fort. It's kind of cool. Um, so far we are getting through it. We've got to go over there still and we've got to also find a way over there. But first off, we're on top of the fort, so. <laughs> well, we're still going and we are looking for our very last symbol, which looks like it might be in this uh, witch's lair, almost. <laughs> so obviously, Middle Ages was very much the time of witchcraft which is what this section of the maze is, is really focused on. And there we have it. We have completed our time passport and put time back to normal. <laughs> now, I think when this maze first opened, you could actually get a reward for doing this. And uh, nowadays, it's just a cute little souvenir to have. And it's just a bit of fun to do. Uh, it's a free attraction that you can do um, if there's passports available in the day. And there usually is at the very start. So, yeah, if you're here, I recommend it. It's a little bit of fun. Okay, so we are back from our adventure today at Warwick Castle. Um, so let's just talk over a few of the things I kind of forgot to talk about when I filmed them, uh, because I think I lost track of the day a little bit there. So let's go on to those first, and then we'll go on to the final thoughts. So yeah, first off, um, as you saw, we met Zog. Um, I absolutely love meeting the characters at these sort of attractions, and Zog was no exception. Um, we got quite lucky with uh, the meet and greet time there because it was the same time as the Birds of Prey show and naturally everybody was over there. So we didn't actually have a wait at all really to meet Zog. Um, I know sometimes at other time slots it can be a lot busier. So if you are coming along to this event and you don't really want to do the Birds of Prey show or you're not too bothered about the Birds of Prey, then I'd recommend that being a really good time to go and see if Zog is doing the meet and greet in the state rooms just because it's a lot quicker of an experience for you that way it saves you a bit of queuing and it's a little bit nicer as well um we had a lovely time meeting zog and you know it was a great interaction um <laughs> i really enjoyed it um so yeah if you are looking to meet zog and you've got little ones who are fans of zog definitely if you are coming this half term don't forget to miss out don't forget to do that meet and greet even um i was gonna say don't forget and don't miss out at the same time that was a bit weird <laughs> And as you've seen earlier in the video, the Quest for the Golden Star is returning this year by the looks of it. And that will be back in the main season with, uh, by the looks of it, all new sort of challenges for the children to get their gold stars. Um, hopefully we'll be back around some point in the summer so we can have a look at that. Um, and we'll be able to bring you some more updates on that. Um, but yeah, always lovely to see the cats in the parks and attractions and this was no exception. Okay, so moving on to the second heat of the archery tournament. Uh, that was, as you saw, a crossbow round, which was a little bit different to the first round. Um, we really enjoyed that round. It was a little bit of fun. Um, the archers were talking to everyone as well before the show started, and they're quite interactive. Um, there are a few more shows that are happening today in the tournament. Unfortunately, we're not going to be sticking around for all of them, and that is a reason that we'll get on to in the closing thoughts section of this um so yeah let's move on to that section then <laughs> that was a good time really so the our closing thoughts on the event um it's a fun little addition on top of your standard day out at warwick castle um it also makes up for the fact that certain elements and parts of the attraction that are normally here are not available so the biggest one obviously was when we were in the state rooms and the the top part of the state rooms uh, they had the entire section, well, literally half of it was closed off due to what looked like more essential works that they were taking out on that part of the attraction. Um, which is, this is something that happens quite a lot in the early part of the season. Um, it's usually in the main summer where the whole castle is open and ready as it should be. When we visited in the past as well, we had, I think when we visited last year actually for Festival of Archery, they had, most of the top section was open. But then we had to leave through the Princess Tower instead of the main staircase. That might have been earlier in the season, actually. It might have been January, I can't quite remember. But 
in the January, February, March time, there are usually different parts of the attraction that are under maintenance and redevelopment, so you don't always get to go into all of it. But the Festival of Archery does sort of accommodate for that quite well and has a lot of new shows and people for you to interact with, which is really good. Um, the other things today, the again, like I said earlier, the dungeons, the jester was on top form over there. He was having a great time. Um, definitely one of my favourite jesters that I've seen this season in the dungeons. Um, but there's some really, really strong actors at Woke Castle both in the courtyard, in the dungeons, and also in all the other shows as well, so the Princess of the Princess Tower. Uh, they were absolutely lovely today, going around, you know, doing their storytelling. So, yeah, the one thing that I always love about Warwick Castle is the actors are just amazing, really. Um, but think about other things on our day. So, obviously, because we visit Warwick Castle quite a lot, and the castle doesn't always change in places, which is a good thing, by the way, just going to throw it out there. It's a good thing that it doesn't change continuously. Because, um, you know, if the attraction changes too much, it kind of gets a bit weird. But we visit Warwick Castle quite a lot, so we don't really do all the attractions every time. So, for example, today we didn't do Time Tower, we didn't do the Main Tower, didn't do the Dungeons. Even though we probably would have been in for a brilliant show with the cast today from what we were seeing. But it's something that I think might also be interesting for this event if it had something else to maybe keep people on the grounds almost because the event runs from 10 to 4 and they have shows running throughout the day at various times and the shows each show for the for the archery is different so you've got tournament one tournament two tournament three there's the bowman show outside on the um, ridge of the castle You've also got the um, there's like the Birds of Prey show, and then they've got in between that some other shows as well, such as there's a Beat the Archer sort of tournament that happens, there's a quiz. Um, unfortunately, as someone who, it may just be me speaking, but as someone who visits the castle quite a lot, there's not really anything else to keep me around and entertained until those shows happen. And yes, I could go. we could go around and do, you know, the castle and the other bits of the castle that we've just mentioned that we didn't do but I'm wondering if for the event next year if they would could potentially look at I don't know what exactly but bring something else in that would keep people on the grounds for those events to continue almost because waiting from 10 to 4 is quite a long time especially when the shows are all quite separated out throughout the day but I'm not fully sure on a, what I what I would add to the event because from what I can see and what I've experienced, this event is really quite perfect as it is. But I don't know, if, like I said, I'm not fully sure what you could add to the event to keep people around for the full duration of the day. Maybe some sort of like character or word hunt or trail around the castle maybe. Sort of like a Quest for the Golden Star, but not Quest for the Golden Star kind of thing. But yeah, what would what would you add? Um, that's a good question, I guess, for this video. If you could add anything to White Castle, what would it be? Um, yeah, so answer that one in the comments below kind of thing, I guess. Um, but yeah, overall, we've had a brilliant day. Um, let's see, we're not going to stick around for the rest of the shows, unfortunately, just because, like I've just said, there's nothing really for us to do in the meantime. Um, but the shows that we have since today are incredible. The um, archers were really brilliant as well. Um, if you are debating on coming down to check it out as a returning visitor to the castle or an all-new visitor to the castle, I would highly recommend it. Um, we've had a brilliant day and hopefully we'll be back at the castle at some point in the near future to check out their other event offerings this year. Um, I believe last year they had a sort of carnival-style event that we missed out on, unfortunately. So that's one I'd definitely like to go and check out this year if I can. Um, and of course we'll be back for Dragon Slayer just because it's such an amazing show. I mean, if you've seen my thoughts on it previously in the in our posts and stuff, but if you do get the opportunity to see Dragon Slayer, I highly recommend it. Um, we'll hopefully be back on that one. Um, but yeah, this event, um, just as a final one, this event is free for any annual pass holders through the Castle or Merlin. So if you are in the area, I recommend getting yourself booked in to come and check this one out. 
it's a really good event and hopefully more of you will come along and enjoy it too. But for now, this is Elise from Theme Park Insanity. Um, if you enjoyed this video, um, please like, subscribe, comment, tell your friends. Um, tell your family if you want them to come uh, down to the castle with you as well. Um, I'd love to sort of see what more of you think of this event. But for now, um, I'll leave you to it. And bye for now.